Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas. We bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. And you guys know that video games, entertainment, and tech are the hotness. That's why we wrap up all the news in the rundown. We won't have to wait much longer to get a look at the latest Batman video game. The upcoming Batman Adventure game from Walking Dead and Game of Thrones developer Telltale Games will be unmasked on March 18th. The developers will be holding a special panel on the game hosted by Kinda Funny's Greg Miller at the South by Southwest Festival, and new footage will hopefully be revealed. Like the other Telltale projects, their Batman game will have an in-depth story where all of your decisions affect the outcome. The first episode swoops down later this year. Total Anarchy is coming to the world of XCOM 2. 2K and Firaxis Games have announced Anarchy's Children, the first DLC add-on for XCOM 2. It doesn't feature any new missions or story content, but does give players more than 100 exotic soldier customization options, including new hairstyles, face paints, and armor. The styles are meant to make your characters appear more menacing and anarchistic, hence the name, although it's unclear if it's actually possible to strike fear into the hearts of an AI opponent. Anarchy's Children will be available on March 17th and costs five bucks by itself. It's one of the three add-ons that will be included in the $20 season pass. Given how the pricing works out, this hopefully means we can expect the future DLC to be bigger and better. If you have young kids, you probably shouldn't let them play virtual reality games. Sony has revealed that the upcoming PlayStation VR headset shouldn't be used by anyone under the age of 12. This obviously poses a problem for anyone who wants to make VR games aimed at children, but it's not totally unexpected. The other two big VR headsets, the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, have already set their age limit at 13. Some experts think it's a bad idea to expose children to VR because it might impair their ongoing visual development. It's also worth pointing out that all of the VR headsets may cause nausea and motion sickness in some users regardless of their age. The Rift and Vive come out in a matter of weeks. The PlayStation VR arrives later this year. PS4 owners finally know when they can get invisible. The turn-based stealth game Invisible Inc. will sneak onto the PS4 on April 19th. Developed by Vancouver-based Clay Entertainment, Invisible Inc. was first released on the PC back in 2014, offering unique turn-based stealth gameplay where players infiltrate different areas, kind of like a combination of XCOM and Splinter Cell. The PC version has already been updated and tweaked many times, and the PS4 port will be up to date with the same content. There's no word if Invisible Inc. will infiltrate the Xbox One. AMC is going to take audiences back into the Badlands. The cable network has officially renewed the Kung Fu series for a second season. This shouldn't come as a surprise. Into the Badlands had the third highest rated first season in cable history, becoming one of AMC's most valuable original shows after hits like Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead. Fans will have to wait a while for the new season though. They won't premiere until 2017. You can learn more about Into the Badlands by watching our interview with producer and star Daniel Wu by clicking the link on your screen or in the description below. J.J. Abrams admits that he kind of screwed up the ending of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Obviously, the story is going to have spoilers, but if you haven't seen the movie by now, then you probably don't care anyway. Speaking with Slash Film, J.J. Abrams says that it was a mistake not to have a moment between Chewbacca and Leia when they first see each other after the death of Han Solo. See? That's what I've been saying! Abrams admits that he shouldn't have had Leia embrace the new character Rey instead of Chewie, and that it wasn't his intention for that moment to feel like a slight. Maybe he can fix it in a special edition cut, but given the history of Star Wars, that's probably not a good idea. It's nice that Abrams has acknowledged his mistake, but he still hasn't apologized for the recycled story and overuse of cutesy nostalgia. Blake wrote that. You'll be able to nitpick The Force Awakens some more when it lands on Blu-ray next month. We haven't seen the last of Chewie and Han Solo. Both characters will appear together in the upcoming Han Solo solo film, which takes place before the events of the original trilogy. That makes it a prequel, a Star Wars prequel. Dun, dun, dun. I have a bad feeling about this. That's it for our rundown. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>